The porn industry dominates the internet, and this is borne out by the statistics. Among Americans, 37% think pornography is morally acceptable. In 2019, there were over 42 billion visits to Pornhub, one of the largest porn sites in the world. That's an average of 115 million visits per day, or 80,000 per minute. While most estimates have the average age of first exposure around 11 or 12 years old, one in 10 kids under 10 have seen porn. In 2008, around the same time smartphones burst onto the scene, research was published by Cyber Psychology and Behavior, and they found that over 93% of boys and 62% of girls had seen online pornography before age 18. But there is much more to the world of internet porn than just the gigantic number of views, views greater in number than Amazon, Netflix, and Twitter combined. There is an inseparable connection between sex trafficking and porn. Sex trafficking, this is defined as a form of modern-day slavery in which individuals perform commercial sex through the use of force, fraud, or coercion, or when the person induced to perform such act has not attained 18 years of age. A viewer of pornography normally believes the production they are watching is between two consenting adults who are getting paid, therefore everything is fine. Well, there is no way viewers can know if what they are watching is rape or consensual. A young girl, what is she going to do? She's pressured into doing the scene. Who's she going to call? Her agent? He's going to tell her, no, do the scene because you signed a contract. If you don't do the scene, I'm going to sue you or I'm going to send cease and desist papers to the other agents. Reading the words of some of these girls who have been sex trafficked and forced into porn and all of these stories of girls whose lives have been ruined by it and by men who have taken advantage of them. Forced sex for money is called sex trafficking, and this is illegal. Consensual sex for money is called prostitution, and it is also illegal. Pornography is simply the exchange of sex for money. The only difference is that this, for the most part, doesn't get regulated, and in turn is allowed to be seen by anybody who wants to view it. A lot of parents are stunned to find out that kids are accessing this stuff because A, they didn't know kids could access this stuff, and B, they had no idea what sort of stuff their kids were accessing. They had no idea that pornography, the mainstream of pornography, has become more violent, more vile, more degrading. They're doing stuff in mainstream porn today that's technically illegal under the Geneva Convention. And so people just, it's taken people a long time to realize that pornography is what it is. Because the courts have sort of judged some sexual content to be covered by the First Amendment, a lot of other courts have simply shied away from touching this issue altogether. And the religious right, social conservatives, the pro-family movement has largely ignored this problem. So while watching porn, the viewer is either witnessing the crime of sex trafficking, when somebody on screen is being forced or coerced into sexual acts for profit, or the viewer is witnessing prostitution, when the people on screen consent to the sexual acts for profit. It is for this reason that experts understand this inseparable link between pornography, sex trafficking, and prostitution. I think the connections are obvious to anybody who has eyes to see, right? Pornography is another form of prostitution. And the only way that you can avoid coming to that conclusion is by doing some vernacular gymnastics that will bend you into all sorts of contorted pretzels. In terms of sex trafficking, everybody knows that there is inextricable links between prostitution and sex trafficking. It's why almost all countries have attempted to ban prostitution even when they have no problem with somebody exchanging money for sex because they know that an industry, a prostitution industry, inevitably leads to prostitution and that prostitution and porn are linked. In fact, According to porn stars that I interviewed, most porn stars work as prostitutes on the side. The Netherlands legalized prostitution, set up red light districts, and now they're trying to scale things back because of the amount of sex trafficking that goes on. Increasingly, it's impossible to tell the difference between a sex trafficked girl who's being raped and the pornography that people are logging on to watch just for fun. There's no difference between the two of those things, and people should understand how chilling that is. According to a report put together by the International Labor Organization, Walk Free Foundation, and the International Organization for Migration, 4.8 million people, almost exclusively female, were victims of forced sexual exploitation in 2016. And it was a report again from the International Labor Organization that said the total annual profits made from forced sexual exploitation are estimated at 99 billion US dollars worldwide. Keep in mind your estimates from 2012, eight years ago. The Protection Project Journal of Human Rights and Civil Society did interviews with 854 women in prostitution in nine countries. Their findings? 49% told us that pornography was made of them while they were in prostitution. But there's more than just legal and cultural issues involved in the porn epidemic. There's also overwhelming research to show the negative effects porn has on the brain. 
There are dozens of studies that show how porn addiction leads to hyperfrontality, which is defined as a condition of reduced activation or inadequate functioning of the cortex of the frontal lobes of the brain. This, in particular, weakens and damages the prefrontal cortex. This area of the brain is responsible for executive function, things like decision-making, personality expression, evaluating risk, controlling impulses, and more. So yes, porn addiction ruins the most important part of your brain. Well, there are a number of effects that porn has on the brain. One is it, it can cut down on your short-term memory. The more that you watch porn, the worse your short-term memory tends to get. Um, Another study found that when neurologists hooked up men to brain scans and had them watch pornography, what the doctors found is that the part of the brain that's activated when men use porn is a part of the brain that deals with objects and not people. So that when we say pornography objectifies women, we have neurological evidence to back that statement up. There are also many extensive studies that show the correlation between porn, aggression, and sexual violence. One in particular analyzed the content of popular pornographic videos and found that of the 304 scenes analyzed, over 88% contained physical aggression. There have been over 100 studies that have found a direct link between pornography and aggression, and over 50 studies that have shown a direct link between pornography and sexual violence. And so while it's not the primary cause necessarily, it's a very strong correlate and a contributing factor um, when we talk about sexual violence occurring. So. Um, in fact, when you do the math on it, the odds that there's no link between porn and sexual violence is one in 88 decillion, which is a number that's so high we can hardly even count that high. Ted Bundy, who confessed to murdering 30 women and girls just days before he got Florida's electric chair in 1989, women he often raped before he beat them to death. Bundy also chose to talk about the dangers of porn just days before his execution. Experience. The most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence and, and sexual violence. Because the wedding of those two forces, as, as I know only too well, brings about behavior that is just, uh, mm. is just uh, too terrible to describe. I've lived in prison for a long time now. And I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question. 